All right, now that we've gone over the basic interface and some of the ideas behind Substance, let's just get in there and build some really simple um, designer uh, materials. So, you know, we've talked about the interface and everything like that. Let's just go in here and say File, New, Substance, and then I'm going to name this um, Class Example for me. Then I'm going to come over to here and make sure I pick um, metal based or uh, physically based metal roughness. That's PBR. If I click this, it's not going to let me OK. It has to be one of these um, graph pieces here. So I'll um, pick this one. I could pick empty and then pick what I want to put in there and stuff, but or do it as I go. But we're just going to pick it. It's going to come up with the basic things we have. It's going to have color, normal, roughness, metal, and, and uh, height. So we're going to say OK. And then it makes it for us and puts all those things right there on the desktop. So the first thing we're going to do is just take a look at some of the stuff we've been talking about. So if I want to make a color out of this stuff, I have to use what would you think is the uniform color. I just click that button. Or we could do the space bar, which is what I do when I'm not exactly sure. I haven't used them a lot. So I'm going to throw this and I attach it to my base color. I just click on it and then I go to there and click on the next one. If I double click on uniform color, you'll see I hit black and this is what it looks like in the environment. I can come over here and say orange or whatever, and automatically it goes to there. I'm going to go down to something like a brown like that for now. And now that I've got this brown color, you know, what do I want to do with it? It just means it made this brown and it made this brown. We can mess with the colors over here. If we look at the output, you'll see what it's going to output. The base color is the name of it. We'll talk about this stuff in further and later in the classes. But let's look at this again. So I've got this one color, but let's say I want to make a wood. How would I do that? There's a couple ways we could do this. We could say duplicate it, Control C, Control V, or just drag a new one down and change this so I want to have two different versions of uh, two different color uh, choices for the wood to go to. So I want this dark color as I go down. And let's so we'll pull it down to here like this. I grabbed the wrong one, but that doesn't really matter. So I'm going to grab these two both and I'm going to flip their positions here. I'm going to put this one above it just because that's what I meant. And I like to do what's above and below. So I've got these two colors. None of them are attached. Everything's fine. But what I want to do is do a blend. So if I push spacebar and I see the first one up here is blend, or if you get used to looking at that, you can do it that way. What blend does is allows me to take two material, two things, and put it into one and then output out. So okay, if I do this and I go to this and I go to this, I don't see any difference. I still see the same color. Well, that's because Blend works kind of like a Photoshop layer where you've got opacity and you can turn it down and on. It's also got all the layer blend types. You can do them add, subtract, or multiply. Again, more like Photoshop. But what we really want to do is take one advantage of one other thing it has in here, which is the opacity. And that is basically where you put a mask, if you think of it that way. So I'm going to go to find something that's a mask. And if I come down here to Generators, and I look inside here, I think if I type in wood, maybe? No, I think it's under grunge, actually. Grunge, and there it is, grunge map 5. So if I double click on this, I just drag it into here. I've got this wood kind of texture going on here. Um, and we can look at what this is made of someday. But right now, let's just look at what we have here. So what does this do? Well, if I take this black and white map and I throw it in here, I now I'm getting that wood texture. See how it works? Wood at least sort of. And we can get I'm gonna get more detail than this in a little bit, but let's take a look at what else we can do just with that. Well, let's see what our next output down is. Zoom in and we'll see that's our normal map. So obviously it's too shiny to start with, which we knew. Um, but it also doesn't have any height or bump map to it. And if it's gonna be a true bark texture, we need to have some kind of height map to it. So we can't just put a black and white map into our normal map because that doesn't really work. But what we can do is we can push the space bar. And by the way, the space bar will zoom through everything that there is if you know the name of it. So if I say HIGT, it'll start to bring me up to height, normal blender, or world units. And I'll drop that in. And I'll drag this to there. So I'm going from there to there. And look at that. I get that height. And I can go to the normal from there. Okay, all based off of this one mask at this point. And we can start to see that it's working in interestingly well. Um, it's very shiny, but we've got a normal map on there that kind of feels like our wood texture we would want. So 
What else can we do? Well, we could take this normal and see if we can get rid of this roughness, which is the shininess. So how would we do that? We could just try right away and drag it in. And it kind of works, but it's still giving us these highlights inside of this area. And really, if there's going to be anything that's going to have that kind of highlighty stuff, assuming this isn't sap, it's going to be the exterior outside and then the darker is going to be less. So maybe the first thing we should do with this is put a invert it, invert the selection. So I'm going to come here, right click, or just spacebar, type in INB, and you'll see invert. And I want to invert grayscale. So I'll invert the grayscale. I'll cl clip it right there. And I can do it two ways. Let me show you another trick. If I grab this, at, this line right here where they're connected, and then I spacebar, push invert, and then say grayscale, it puts it right between the two of them for me. Okay, so it's done that for me. It's pretty interesting. Now the inside's not shiny, but the outside is. So we still have kind of too much shine going on here for this, this wood texture. How do we fix that problem? Well, let's grab this edge right here and go to Levels, because Levels is going to allow us to turn up the brightness and the darkness of this map as it's used for this. And I want you to know that whatever I'm clicking on that's highlighted and has this picture in it means that's what's being seen here. So if I double click on this, you'll see this is what I'm messing with. It also gives me the properties for it. Okay, so if I scroll this over so there's more white, we get flatter textures. I want to do something like that. Now remember, whiter it is, the less reflective and shiny it will be. So if I pull this back a little bit too much, there. But the interior is going to be the most um, non-shiny, as it were. Okay. So there we go. So now we've got our wood kind of set up, and I'm going to come back and fix these colors in a minute. But let's take a look at this metal. Metal is really just a uh, there's no metal in wood, so what we could do is just push the click it, push the space bar, and say uh, uniform color, and we'll throw it straight into here. Now, what happens with metal is it's inverted from um, the it's black is less metallic and white is more metallic, whereas it's black is more shiny and white is less shiny in a grunge. So the next thing we have is height, and I'm not even going to worry about that right now. So we've got this wood, 